Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the cloud computing platform called the Google Colab for your data science projects. If you're new here, my name is Chinen Nanta Senamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On the Data Professor YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is go to Google and search for Google Colab, C-O-L-A-B, enter, and click on the first link. Okay, so before you will see this page, you will have to sign in to your Gmail. And once signed in, you can have a look at this pop-up menu, which will allow you to see the recent notebook that have been opened and the example notebooks that Google have provided, as well as the existing notebooks that are in your Google Drive. Whenever you create a Colab notebook, it will go into your Google Drive. And you can also import notebooks from GitHub. So you can put in the GitHub username. For example, if I type in data professor, enter and it will retrieve the code that are in the code repository. They are the list of Jupyter Notebook that I have uploaded, okay? So there are four available. So click on one and then it will import directly into your Google Colab. And you can also upload it from your own desktop. So in this tutorial, we're going to create a new notebook. So let's start fresh from scratch and let's build your very own Jupyter Notebook on the Google Colab. Okay, so the first thing that you can do is give it a name. Okay, I just call it my notebook or just like my first notebook. Okay, so notice here that there are two types of cells that are available. The first cell is the code cell and the second cell is the text cell. So the text cell will allow you to put in text, which will be in markdown format. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this will be the example text. And I'll add another text. And in order to give it a heading, I will use the hashtag. I'll call it heading one. Shift enter or even the play button. So this is heading one and let's give it some code. A equals to one. Okay. And notice that when I run the first cell for the first time, it will display connecting and it will take some time because it will need to first find an available computing resource for you on Google platform. And once it is initiated, you will see the RAM and the disk that are available for your computation. So if you hover your mouse over it, you will see that you are assigned about 12 gigabytes of memory and the hard disk you have about 100 gigabytes, but it is currently using 27. So in the code cell, you can assign the code to it. And after that, shift enter and notice that the number to the left, similar to a Jupyter notebook, it will tell you the running number. So whenever you run a new text box, it will give you a new number, number three. Okay. And if you rerun the previous cells, the number will overlap to four, right? So this is two. So if I run it again, it will become five, right? Five. There you go. So let's give it some structure, shall we? Notice that there is the table of content to the left here. If you click on it, it will expand. And notice that currently we have only one heading, okay? So let me add heading to, and we'll use the two hashtag, which will make it a subsection of heading one. And we could add text underneath it as well. Heading two. Oh, okay, it's a code. So I need to add this to a text. I move this up and down. So notice that this, if you click on the cell, the arrows up and down will allow you to move the cells up or down. Okay, and you can even remove the cell if you want. Okay, so normally the cells will be added beneath the cell that is currently selected on. So if I click on the heading two and I clicked on the code, it will add a new cell right beneath it. So let's assign some more values. Var one equals to two. Okay, and I'm going to add another text box. And I'm going to give it a three hashtag and it will be subheading. 
Okay, so notice that heading one has one hashtag, heading two has two hashtag, heading three has three hashtag. And notice that they are in hierarchical order. So when you have one hashtag, it's the topmost order. And when you have two hashtag, it will be a subsection of the previous heading. And we have three hashtag, it will be the subheading of the two hashtag. Okay, so let me add this. I just call it 1.2. And this one becomes 1.1. 1 .1. Here we go. So heading one is here and the subsection, I will add another number after it. So 1.1, it has two hashtag and this one also has two hashtag. And because heading three is located underneath heading 1.2, heading three here will then become a subheading of 1.2. But however, if I move this up to be underneath the 1.1, then notice that heading three will then become a subsection of heading 1.1. Okay, so I make this 1.3, move it down. Okay, and so you see that there are three subsections underneath heading one. If I add another one, if I have Okay, so this one has two hashtag, this one has three hashtag. And if I have another one, which has four hashtag, 3.1.1. Okay, so the hierarchical way will allow you to group the various parts of your code. So it comes in handy and it gives the notebook some structure to it. So it will make going through the notebook a lot easier. Okay, so normally the notebook will come with many of the popular packages pre-installed such as pandas. So for example, let's type in import pandas as pd. It already has it installed, right? So importing it will work. So let's try import seaborn as sns. It also has, right? Import numpy as np. Import sklearn. And for example, if you want to import some classifier from sklearn. Okay, and we can do that as well. And matplotlib, import matplotlib as plt. Okay, and if you want to add some heading to it, you can do that as well. We'll give it heading one level, and then you could call it import libraries. Here we import the necessary libraries used in this notebook. So you could write in anything that you like. You can even bold the text. For example, if you want to make libraries bold, you could click on the bold symbol. If you want to make notebook italic, click on it. And if you want to make it both bold and italic, Okay, so it requires three asterisk. Just click on B and then I, so it will be three asterisk. And if you wanna add bullet points, click on it. And if you wanna add numbered list, click on it. Right, and what if you want to install packages that is not available by default? If I wanna use import pi 3D mo, it doesn't have this package, so what I need to do is install it by typing in the exclamation mark, pip install pi 3 dmo And then this will install the program. And to run the example code, I'm going to use this. Okay. And so the example code works. So this is a package that comes in handy for visualization of the protein structure. And it's very useful for bioinformatics work. 
Okay. So in a nutshell, this is how the Google Colab works. I'm sure you're going to find it very useful as I did. And so as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And let's use this opportunity to build your data science portfolio. So feel free to use the Google Colab to explore the various data sets and follow along with the tutorials that I have mentioned in this channel. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.